So I picked uh, two options. Option A, catering for car use. And after that, we're going to look at the electrification of transport in our area, in the North East. And everything is under the heading of how we best, what is the best way to manage personal mobility in the North East in time and year or the next 25 years. And there is a lot that already happened to make that happen. So we know that on average, at least from Monday to Friday, a typical family, a typical car user would travel up to 40 miles on average. This is important because electric vehicles don't give you a great range. But at least uh, during your kind of working week, the range which an electric vehicle could offer, for example, would be sufficient. And this is what's happening at the moment in the northeast around the castle, and you see on the map all the different charging posts which are already in place. Which is very good news, also because the North East has been considered, has been labelled as the first low carbon vehicle region in the UK. It's not me saying that, it's number 10 in London saying that. But at the same time, we can see also in the UK map that the charging infrastructure is also <coughs> developing in other areas of, uh, and not just in the North East. So there is a fair amount of infrastructure around Coventry, for example, in the Midlands, London obviously, but at the moment if you want to use an electric vehicle, for example, to go from London up to Newcastle or even Edinburgh, that would be a little bit difficult because it's still early days. The infrastructure is not so widespread yet. It will be, but it will take some time. But going back to what we can do with traditional vehicles, petrol or diesel engine cars that you see on the road every day, can we start to minimize the impact, the CO2 impact on the environment? Can we try, can you try to save some money? Well, it's not that difficult to do that if you start sharing or hiring a vehicle if you live in a city like Newcastle, Durham, Sunderland, or you live just within a few miles radius from the center of those major cities. Because at times you can also rely on public transport. You can still jump on a metro, the odd time you might get into a taxi at night, or you can use uh, buses um, around the northeast. And I think, in that respect, even if I'm not a specialist, the um, public transportation infrastructure in the region is pretty good. Surely it could be better, but there are lots of other areas where the situation is not as good as it should be. What's the situation if you are, if you live far from a city? Well, it's a bit more difficult. There are fewer buses, maybe the metro doesn't reach your area where you live, and you start to feel a bit isolated, which is a fact. It's a fact of life. So what do you do? Well, through smartphone applications and some new businesses which would promote hiring and car sharing, you wouldn't be necessarily so isolated. So all of a sudden, you don't just carry your iPhone just to play with a few applications, but you use it for a much more powerful reason. Even if, obviously, it's up to you and you need to be a bit proactive to do that. But those opportunities start to be around the UK as well now. So this wouldn't be an ideal answer to the fact that you need to share a vehicle but you live far away from the city centre, but little by little those things are becoming reality, which is the good news. So what is the benefit of doing that? We're talking about intelligent transport and most of the time you rely on the government giving you all the answers, providing solutions all the time. And it's right to have a kind of mindset. But at the same time, the government cannot necessarily resolve your own personal problem because you need to commute to work at a certain time of the morning and maybe you live 20 miles away from your workplace. But that's your own individual situation. The government is not going to be there to provide a perfect solution for every single UK citizen. It's not going to happen. So what do we need to do? We need to change, we need to shift mentalities. The mindset we've got is quite obsolete. 
So we need to try and do something about it. So it's also what you do in your own community. But we can, they call it, this is the year of communication. Can you use your emails, your phone, to do something quite useful with it? So it's a bit easier to travel from A to B. And we can see that uh, uh, it is happening, even if it's a very tiny portion of the population sharing a vehicle or hiring a vehicle, but it's a little trend which surely will gain momentum in the next few years. Also because traveling is becoming very expensive, especially if you own your own car. Now the transition is, are you going to travel using a normal vehicle? Or are you considering the opportunity of hiring, so you don't have to buy it, there's no risk there, or are you happy to share maybe an electric vehicle, an EV, or are you happy to hire or even try to uh, drive a plug-in hybrid? And you start to see a few of those cars around, produced mostly by Japanese manufacturers like Toyota and Honda. These are not future products, these are pro products which are today available. They're still a bit expensive, which is a problem, but you can lease those vehicles and in the future you'll be able to hire more of those vehicles. This little Renault Twizy, which I saw at the Geneva Motor Show last week, will be sold in the UK very shortly and the asking price is about £7,500. It's still a bit expensive, but even if you buy a maxi scooter, which is not electric, will cost you at least 5k. And this would give you also weather protection, and it's a two-seater vehicle, even if you don't have a lot of storage. So there are different business models around to make sure that you can start using electric vehicles. You just have to look for them. And at the same time, even if the battery is a very expensive component within a vehicle, you wouldn't buy it, even if you want to buy the vehicle, but you would lease it. So if there is something wrong with it, you would give it back to the manufacturer. And a company like Common Wheels in Newcastle, if you walk down Dean Street, most of the time you see a Mitsubishi Miev, which is an electric vehicle, which you can hire for £4 an hour. So it's possible to try it out at least. The Technology Strategy Board has done a proper analysis of users using electric vehicles and the results are quite promising, convincing. People are happy driving electric vehicles. Just one minute. Okay. But the problem is with electric vehicles you don't have the range you would have using a traditional car. This is our car, will be produced in collaboration with partners in Gayset. It's a car donated by Nissan Manufacturing from Sunderland and it's been converted into an electric vehicle. So we're going to test it soon. And this is another vehicle which we style, produced by Avid over in Cremlington and it's in a limited production run. So even small companies can make an impact on the market within reason. A few ideas of a pilot project which we did run uh, three years ago. How you can have some kind of software which is embedded into your phone which can help you to plan your trip from A to B. And the electric vehicle could be part of a public infrastructure. So if you go to London, you might jump on the train and you end up your journey hiring a vehicle to get to your final destination. It's thinking about public transportation and electric vehicles in a slightly different manner. Or why don't you use a scooter? This is another project we just finished. This scooter would cost roughly £5,000 if it goes into production within a year or so. And it gives you a 100 mile range. So it is a mature product. So even if there is no charging infrastructure, who cares? You're not going to drive your scooter from here to London and back on a daily basis. Because that's not its intended use. I'm going to have to stop you, Matteo. It's time. Last thing I'm going to say, the uh, advantages of electric vehicles is the fact you can really reduce emissions. Already in the North East, there is a plan, and also in the UK, to produce more green power. And at the same time, there is more of a um, momentum 
developing with a low carbon economy, so there will be also more jobs available. So it's going to help the UK economy as well. Thank you. Okay.